And somehow you must be able to come to something very essential in humans because your books are loved all over the world. It's not that you are particularly read in the Latino world, but not in Germany or not in the US. So what is it that makes it possible for people in apparently different cultures to appreciate what you're bringing, what you're writing? I think I write about human emotions that are common to everybody. We all feel the same. We all feel fear. We all want our children to do better than us. We all feel love the same way. We all get mad the same way. And I don't know why my books are successful in 30 languages all over the world. But I recently read uh, an article that a professor of the University of Virginia wrote, Professor Donald Shaw. And he talks about the boom of Latin American literature that was um, in the 70s, 60s, 70s, part of the 80s. All male, all male authors that created this incredible movement of Latin American literature that told the world who we were and told us who we were. There were mirrors in which we could see Latin Americans, our own faces. And he says that the vision of the men of the womb, of, of, of the boom, was existentialist, fatalist, pessimistic, a very, and also very male. And then what I, and I don't belong to the boom, I came, I'm the post-boom, I start another movement. And it says that the difference is that I see the world exactly in another way. I see it in a positive way, with hope, and I believe that love redeems everything. That there is a natural justice that is not the happy ending, but that there is a natural justice and balance in everything that exists, and that love is a force that redeems. And I think the readers might find in that explanation something, something. I had never thought of it. I just read this two weeks ago, so I have it fresh in my mind. But I think that that's the way I see life. I see life as a very, or the world, as a very troubled place. And awful things happen, but there's beauty. There's constant, permanent beauty. And, and there is this incredible force that we all have. And, and sometimes it's so um, crushed that we don't even perceive it. If, if, you, if you think of, of a, half a million women raped in Congo to the point that they can't even walk, then you say, wh wh what happened there? What happened? But in, in spite of that, there is redemption. And these women help each other. And, and, and they are going to stop it. And so, so there is hope. There is always hope. And in my long life, Walter, I have seen a lot. I was born in the middle of the Second World War when, when they threw the bombs in Hiroshima and Nagasaki at the time of the Holocaust, when millions and millions of people were killed systematically. I was born in a time where feminism was not a word yet, where child labor, union labor, I mean, was... Nobody talked about it. Racism was rampant. Half of the world were colonies of Europe. All that has changed in my lifetime. So I have seen the world go through, go through terrible crises, and we seem to walk in circles, but it's not a circle, it's a spiral. And we seem to go pass again the same place. Yes, it is, but we're a little higher and higher. And in my years, I have seen that the world is a better place, no matter what, a much better place for more people. Still, much needs to be done, a lot, and I'm here to help do it, but I'm not at all discouraged. I think that my grandchildren will live in a better world than my grandparents did. On our website, globalleadership.tv, you will find additional footage, other dialogues with innovation leaders from around the world, and also the hands-on practices that help them and their organizations to move from inspiration to real change.